Hi students and welcome to today's lesson. I'm Mr. Hunter. Today we will answer the question, how can we describe the shape of land? Are you ready? Grab your pencil and your science journal and let's go. Welcome back. Look at this map of all the national parks we visited in our last lesson. A map is a flat model of Earth's surface and features as seen from above. I love maps. Let's look at another one. Did you know that maps have a map key? The tree symbol in this map key represents national parks and lands. Can you find the tree symbol on the map? Point to the locations of the national parks and lands that we explored last time. What do you notice about the locations of the national parks and lands? I notice that they are spread out across the map. Think about what you know about the landforms in each area. What do you think the shape of land looks like in between these areas? Imagine you are driving from Buffalo Gap to Grand Teton. You look out the window. What do you think the land looks like? Maybe the land is hilly, but not as high as a mountain. I'm not sure what land looks like in other places. Hmm, maybe we can look at landforms in other locations to help us answer the question, how can we describe the shape of land? Oh, look, here are some additional maps that might help. These four maps show the same continent. Did you know that a continent is a very large area of land? Look at how large North America is. The United States is located in North America, and so are the national parks and lands we saw on the previous map. You might be wondering, why do we need four maps? Well, each map shows the locations of one kind of landform that we observe in the national parks. Do you notice the map key at the bottom of each map? The symbol shows the kind of landform represented on the map. This map shows mountains. This map shows plains. This map shows sand dunes. And the last map shows active volcanoes. Let's look closer at these maps. Let's start with mountains. Here is the symbol that shows mountains on the map. What do you notice about this map? Where do you see mountains in North America? Can you point to them on the screen? I notice that the mountains are in a line on each side of the continent, and there are three long lines of mountains. I also notice that there are more mountains on the left side than on the right side of North America. Hmm, I wonder why. Next, let's look at the map of the sand dunes. This map is a map of sand dunes. This color shows where sand dunes are on the map. Do you remember what sand dunes are? Sand dunes are the hills made of sand. So what do you notice on this map? Point to where you see sand dunes on the map. Hmm, I notice that the sand dunes are mostly in the middle of the continent. I also notice that they look like patches. Now that we know where there are mountains and sand dunes in North America, let's look at our third map. This map shows the plains in North America. Plains are large areas of mostly flat land. The plains are marked in color on the map. Where do you see plains on the map? Point to where you see them. 
I notice that the planes cover a big area that goes from top to bottom in the middle of the continent. There are also planes here on the right side of North America next to the Atlantic Ocean. The next map shows the final landform we will explore today. Are you ready? This map is a map of active volcanoes. Each volcano is marked by a little triangle. What do you notice about this map? Where do you see volcanoes? I notice that there are a lot of volcanoes on the left side of North America, near the Pacific Ocean. The volcanoes also look like they are in three groups or lines. I remember that we noticed mountains also form lines. Oh wow, look at this map. This map shows all the landforms we looked at today on one map. I think it is time to play a game with all of the landforms we learned about. The game is called the Elevation Game. I will show you three different landforms, and when you see the landform, you show me with your body what the elevation is. Let's practice with our hot air balloon. Remember when we were at sea level? Sea level is a level of the ocean. Boats and ships sail at sea level. Elevation is the height of something, such as a mountain above sea level. So, when we say that a mountain has a high elevation, we mean that the top of the mountain is high above the ocean or above sea level. The higher a landform or an object, such as a hot air balloon, is above sea level, the higher its elevation. Let's imagine our hot air balloon floats over to the plains on the other side of the mountains. The plains are not very far above sea level. So we would say that the plains have a low elevation. How would you show a low elevation with your body? Are you sitting or laying on the floor? Are you as low as you can go? Moving your body down low is a great way to show low elevation. Now let's practice again. Imagine we are in our hot air balloon and we float to the top of the mountain. Whoa, we are up really high. The boats look so tiny from up here. How would you move your body to show high elevation? Are you standing as tall as you can with your arms up really high to show me high elevation? Awesome! Ready to play our game? First, we will visit the Rocky Mountains. What is the elevation like here? Show me with your body. The Rocky Mountains have a high elevation, so let's reach up high! Great work. Here, we are at the Great Plains. What do you think the elevation is here? Can you show me with your body? Yes, the Great Plains have a low elevation, and I see you are super low to the ground. Great work. I have a tricky one for you now. These are the sand dunes. Hmm. What do you think their elevation is? I know that the sand dunes are not as high as mountains, but they are taller than the plains. So I'm going to crouch down and kneel. Phew! Learning about landforms can be a real workout. So, what do you now understand about the shape of the land across North America? What did you learn from our game? Well, I learned that the shape of land isn't the same everywhere. North America has lots of different landforms. 
the elevation of the landforms can be really different too. Landforms like mountains and volcanoes have high elevation. Others, such as plains and sand dunes, have lower elevations. I wonder how the landforms of North America compare with the landforms of other continents. I've seen pictures of mountains on another continent. Maybe that continent has other landforms too, but I'm really not sure. Next time, we will expand our observations of landforms and landform locations to other continents. I can't wait to explore landforms around the world with you. Let's review your task for today. First, answer the question about landforms. Second, summarize what you learned about the shape of land in this lesson. Thanks for joining me as we explored landforms. Your task for today is to complete the Lesson 6A Science Journal.